It's been called the best kept secret in Fairfax County, perhaps because of both its name and location. When a Red Apple 21 crew went to investigate recently, we found out why. And if you looked for Falls Church High School in Falls Church, you'd come up empty. This building itself uh, was put together in 1961. Falls Church High School, the way I understand it, really came into being in 1943. Then they moved to uh, the Whittier site in Falls, the city of Falls Church. That's where the Falls Church High School exists until 1967. This was the original Whittier Intermediate School, and then they swapped places. So this is, this uh, school has been in existence since 1968 on this site. We have approximately 1,400 students at Falls Church. We're the smallest school in Fairfax County. We have approximately 23% Asian, 8% Hispanic, and 7% black. And there are other groups, but they comprise the uh, majority of a minority population. The advantage of being a small school, I, th I think we are better off here as a small school uh, than a lot of the other schools. The advantage of a small school, two, threefold. Number one, students get a chance to participate in more activities. The classes are smaller in size. And the reason for that is because we are given special dispensation on the pupil-teacher ratio for being a small school, so we can offer just as many courses here as any of the larger schools. So our pupil-teacher ratio is lower, and also the chance for the students to uh, shine in all activities. I can't say there's any one feature that I'm proud of. I, I guess I can say I'm proud of the whole school due to the, the caring attitude. The teachers here are very caring. Uh, they're innovative. They're creative. Whenever a student wants, say, a course to be taught, or teachers want a course to be taught, they put their heads together and they come up with something for the students. The students here are caring. The students uh, really respect the school. So I really feel between the teachers and the students, that's what makes the school. It's not any individual separate course. So if I had to say what I'm proud of, I'm proud of the entire school. Let's find out more about some of the programs at Falls Church High School. Language Across the Curriculum, or LAC, is a program that was developed at Falls Church High School. The idea is to allow underachieving students to integrate the processes of reading, writing, listening, speaking, and thinking through group interaction in all classes. Jane Vaught, who chairs the LAC program, explains. My name is Jane Vaught and I'm a reading resource teacher here at Falls Church High School. I'm also coordinator of the Language Across the Curriculum project. This is a four-year grant through the Minority Achievement Program. We are now in our third year and it's a staff development program aimed at helping the underachieving student, particularly minority students. We began in the year of 85-86 and the idea was that we wanted to uh, as teachers look at what research has to say about language and learning because we feel that students who are unsuccessful in school often lack the necessary literacy skills reading writing speaking listening and thinking to do well and to be a success academically so what we planned originally was that we would have teachers from across the curriculum and in our first year we would particularly ask for ninth grade teachers to volunteer. So in this first year we had teachers from science, math, English, social studies, uh, we had a, an electronics teacher, we had an art teacher. We also made use of the reading resource teachers in our school and people who had been through the Northern Virginia Writing Project. We divided ourselves into small teams that year. So we had about 12 teachers, and the first year we had two teams of six per team. We made sure that on each small team, we had a reading resource teacher and a writing fellow. The Language Across the Curriculum Project is based on a national model uh, from the National Writing Project and is known in many circles as a writing across the curriculum program. We specifically chose the word language because we 
wanted to focus on reading, writing, speaking, listening, and thinking, or the development of thinking through the language skills. So we have termed ours language, but it's very similar to the writing across the curriculum projects. The success of the language across the curriculum project is measured in several ways. One, we as a group of LAC participants, volunteer participants, give students a writing sample at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year and we score that sample holistically and each year of the project we have seen as a total group that students have improved in their ability to write. We focus on such things as fluency, clarity, and organization primarily. The math class that we're seeing is solving a problem in a group. The purpose of using the group in this situation is to make sure that every student has an opportunity to talk and work at solving the problem. Part of the structure for this group came as a result of a consultant from the Cooperative Learning Center at the University of Minnesota who came in and gave ideas on ways to structure for positive interdependence and to ensure that stu each student does talk and that one person doesn't dominate. It's certainly different than what you would see in terms of a large group discussion where only a few students can participate. Students aren't the only ones who benefit by working as a team. A small support team of four teachers discuss a workshop they attended and share their classroom experiences with group learning that she used with the students? Well, I, went in, I went in the day afterwards and I actually tried that uh -huh. and the response that day and then the couple days since then has been amazing. I mean I haven't done it every day but that one day I did it and it has really helped them focus on actually comparing their homework assignments. Uh -huh. They start leaning over the desks and putting their heads closer together. Twelve-inch voice that you Language played a key role in another outstanding program at Falls Church, the Model Judiciary Program. Students assume the roles of lawyers, judges, and juries. Today you're going to be seeing a simulation of a mock Supreme Court the students today are going to be playing the parts of judges and lawyers. The lawyers that you will see have been coached by original teams that went all the way to the Supreme Court in a competition. The Model Judiciary Program is sponsored by the YMCA and the Virginia State Bar Association. It's designed to teach students about law. It gives them an opportunity to role play being a lawyer at the local level, at the appellate level, and then at the Supreme Court level. The students have to work very hard in preparing for this. They have to work with attorney advisors, first of all. They are taught how to do research, uh, like a lawyer would do, legal research. They learn how to defend or prosecute a case. They learn how to prepare a petition and brief for appeal. And they learn how to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of legal cases. And finally, they learn how to become oral advocates. Mr. Diamond had one week before Ms. Doyle's death saved her life after an apparent suicide attempt. The emotional stress that Mr. Diamond suffered from seeing the woman he had just saved from death one week earlier die in front of his eyes constitutes enough apparent need for Mr. Diamond to receive psychiatric assistance. Obviously, under the above stated circumstances of this case, Mr. Diamond had every need for psychiatric evaluation. Mr. Diamond's court-appointed attorney should have rec recognized these circumstances and submitted him for a psychi psychiatric evaluation, thereby providing a substantive defense which could possibly have freed his client. Your Honors, we submit to this court the fact that John Diamond was denied effective assistance of counseling under his Sixth Amendment right, guaranteeing him the right to counsel. As a sponsor, it was the most exciting thing I think I've ever engaged in. 
uh, the competition demands that the students be prepared to do many things. They have to commit time and effort. They have to have courage. Uh, they appear before real life judges at the local level, Fairfax County judge. Then at the appellate level, they appear before a tribunal of appeal court judges. And then at the state level, they appeared before the Virginia State Supreme Court. The judges challenge them in their arguments and they question them so that the students have to be able to think on their feet. It really challenges the highest level of thinking skills. So for me, being able to coach somebody and to motivate them to do this kind of activity makes me believe that maybe I am being successful as a teacher. It was really exciting. In a statewide competition involving more than 1,000 Virginia students, the two two-student teams from Falls Church won in the regional competition and both teams were selected to appear before the Virginia Supreme Court. The result? The Falls Church team of Lee Avery and Andy Wills was declared the state champions. Sarah Hajar and April Armstrong appeared before the Virginia Supreme Court. I think this is one of the best things kids can do in high school because I learned more from this probably than just about anything else and I'm so glad that we did it in our class and let, because it's limited, you can only have a certain amount of liars and stuff, but I think that every kid should participate in a mock trial. I think it's an incredible experience and it gives you a lot of confidence in yourself that you probably, about things you probably never were aware that you could do, like get up in front of a lot of people and speak. It really teaches you a lot about what you honestly can do. Makes you proud too. Yeah, makes you feel good. <laughs> Students weren't the only ones to be recognized for excellence on a state and national level. Two of the three teachers selected as state finalists from Virginia in the 1987 Presidential Awards for Excellence in Science and Math Teaching were from, you guessed it, Falls Church High School. We joined awardees Becky Dewey and Carolyn Canzano for a look at the conceptual chemistry class they piloted at Falls Church High School. Conceptual chemistry differs from regular chemistry in that conceptual chemistry is more verbal than mathematical. It is more qualitative than quantitative. This program was established in 1984 at Falls Church. We piloted the program. Conceptual chemistry is a course which focuses on the practical as well as the technical aspects of chemistry. As part of our celebration of National Science and Technology Awareness Week, my students are making hot air balloons. The class is involved in different steps of the preparation of the hot air balloons. The, the group that's just in front of me is measuring the actual hover temperature. Previously in the classroom, we calculated the theoretical hover temperature, and we're going to make a comparison of the two. We spent uh, two days uh, assembling the balloons. You get tissue paper, just like the tissue paper that we uh, use at Christmas time, and you glue three panels together. After you have made a total of six panels for the balloon, you take the six panels, you fold them over, and trim the paper to assume the shape of the hot air balloon. Then each of the six panels are, are glued together with airplane cement. Then we have to attach to the bottom of the balloon copper wiring to hold it, the base of the balloon down. Then we're ready to launch the balloon. To launch the balloon, we need only a camping stove and a, a stove pipe. And as you can see, it takes no time at all to launch a balloon. We found that our balloons rise as high as 150 to 200 feet and they go considerable distances. So we have to have uh, uh, crews to go out and recover our hot air balloons. I have with me Young Pak, one of my AP chemistry students. Young was a regional science fair winner in biochemistry. He has just returned from the 39th science and engineering fair. Young, will you tell us something about your project, please? Um, as the title implies, my project primarily deals with determining the amino acid composition in proteins in legumes and legume is 
a big word for beans. And what I can conclude from a project is that you can get all the proteins you need from vegetables and not primarily from meat, meat, meats. And I took great pride in being able to represent Falls Church High School at the county regionals and international science fair. This would not have been possible without the full support provided by Ms. Dewey and Ms. Kanzana. Presidential Award finalist Carolyn Kanzano devised and piloted the liberal arts-oriented conceptual chemistry class. Many other Fairfax County schools later implemented conceptual chemistry because of the success it enjoyed at Falls Church High. Bringing biotechnology to the high school lab is a new challenge that Carolyn Kanzano is now pursuing. My name is Carolyn Kanzano, and I'm a science teacher at Falls Church High School. I teach a chemistry and advanced placement biology, and I'm also the science department chairman. Uh, today you'll be seeing some of my advanced placement students from periods three and four, and they're doing a very uh, exciting lab in biotechnology. They are measuring uh, DNA sizes and this lab is called Restriction Fragments. And they're one of the few high schools in the country that are doing this lab. Um, the lab that they're doing, uh, they're using equipment that I got from a workshop last summer at Georgetown University. And the training for this lab I also received there. The students um, are going to be uh, practicing how to load an agarose gel. The students will also then be loading um, the real thing, uh, and the gel is, the agarose gel is in an electrophoresis bed. Yes, and they're going to be loading that gel, and then they're going to uh, look at the results of Monday's lab and look at the DNA bands that have been stained with methylene blue. You'll also see some of the students that are doing the calculations, exactly how they measure the sizes of these DNA bands. Today in Fairfax County, we have a variety of students with a variety of interests and motivations. And one of the aims is to bring science to a variety of students, students who are going on in a science as well as those students who are going to be lawyers, um, who are going to major in journalism, who are going to be accountants. And at Falls Church High School, we would like to have uh, science courses that are of interest to uh, all kinds of students. We have a conceptual chemistry. We have project physics. And in fact, we piloted the conceptual chemistry here at Falls Church High School. I also see. Um, for those students who are going on in science that, that they have very challenging and rigorous science courses and our GT science courses uh, do that. Um, I also, um, one of my goals is to have uh, biotechnology implemented in the high school level and at Falls Church we're one of the few pioneers in the country that are doing this. This is the lab where they're going to measure the sizes of DNA bands cut by a restriction enzyme or a restriction endonuclease. And Wendy and Misha are taking this sample, which has been cut by um, Hindi 3, which is a restriction <coughs> enzyme, and they're putting that small sample of DNA into one of the wells of the agarose and the agarose is this slab right here, and the liquid is a uh, special buffer with a pH of around 7.4. And they're loading the uh, gel with the DNA. Okay, you're gonna need to look over here. And um, this is still in the process of destaining, but if you look carefully, you can see of the unknowns, the second 
tube had one unknown band, and the third tube had two unknown bands. And you can see. Now, did you see those? I don't know if you can yeah, see from where you are. But then. you can see the, the two bands. That's and then great. the That's marker the lane. Right? That, that would travel. Right, that would be the distance that they migrated. That migrated. Just, they had <laughs> migrated from the well. And this lane right here with the markers uh, is we're still destaining. Okay. Uh, can you folks in the back see That's that? Because tomorrow it might not be this clear. Mm -hmm. this, this band is, you me to, would you like me to explain? This band is uh, the first unknown that they did, and there was only one band of DNA. And in this lane, you can see one dark band here and a, a lighter band here. And they were able to calculate the distances that these two bands migrated, and therefore they were able to calculate the sizes of those DNA bands. On the surface, there doesn't seem to be anything unusual about a group of teachers sitting down for lunch. But at Falls Church High, this is one of the regular Wednesday faculty luncheons prepared and served by students in the restaurant trades vocational classes. Simpson, who originated the program four years ago, explains. We've been out in the other room where we've been feeding the faculty the lunch. Now I'd like to take you on a tour of the kitchen and show you some of our operations. The first operation we would go to is our cookie making. Here we're pressing out our chocolate chip cookie and putting a little bit of sugar on the top of it. On the chocolate chip cookie, that makes it turn out just a little bit browner and gives it a little sweeter taste. That's sweet on chocolate. <laughs> Moving over then is our finished cookie. Coming out of the oven, we're placing them on the cooling racks to cool before we place them in the packages and we sell them. The next thing we'll see is we serve chicken today is making the stock out of the chicken backs. Here we're cutting the onions and we have shredded the carrots for the chicken stock. We'll be putting it in the pot there and then going over to the chicken carcass and rendering it down to a stock so we can use it in future foods. Over here, we have Kim cutting chicken breasts into chicken scampi. We have a catering order tomorrow, which we're going to feature chicken scampi. Kim is cutting it and then laying it out on the plate, which we will bake it with a little bit of butter and garlic. In this area is where we're breading the chicken. Having cut it, we're now breading it to get ready to go to the fryer. That's what Kevin and Peanut are doing. The next area we'll visit is what we call our ready line, where we're assembling the lunch that we had featured out in the paw print grill. The fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, and our plate garnish. The hottest job in the kitchen is the fry station. That's with Ashraf over there frying and Michael running the ovens right behind him. They're checking the temperature for the chicken so that we serve the chicken at a minimum of 165 degrees internal temperature. As we saw earlier, we were cutting the vegetables for our stock. This is the stock pot where we're rendering the chicken backs down to a sauce. Then we'll add our vegetables and we cook it further for reducing it down. Almost half of what we see in the level here.
after lunch, we took a peek at a peer counseling session. It's a chance for students to discuss among themselves topics that are important to them, such as today's topic. Okay, um, next question is, how do you feel when there's a big age difference? Uh, Rebecca? Oh, Graham? Man. I really don't. I think it's up to two people, the two people involved. If they don't mind a big age difference, I don't think it should matter to anybody else. So I really feel that there's, it's all right to have a big age difference. You don't think there are any problems that de could develop between like when people have a different age difference, or the age differences with there people? There might be with other people, or if you can't go someplace, if if you know the person's older and they can, they're of drinking age and you're not, you kind of can't go out as many places as with someone with their own age. Any other comments? There are some restrictions, but yet it's I think how you get to know that person and if you feel the bond between the friendship or the relationship is strong enough to withstand the different ages. Uh, different ages also has to do with friendships because say somebody's in high school and another person's in college, you might, you know, like want to go out with this college friend, but she might still want to have some of her high school friends along, but you know, they might just not clash or something. We found an interesting mix of theater in Zoe Dillard's drama class, where emphasis is placed on research and collaboration, as well as performance. My name is Zoe Dillard, and I'm the drama director and teacher here at Falls Church High School. And I have to say, I think uh, I'm pretty proud of the students that we have here and how hard they work. We have a, an ongoing pro uh, program of three major productions a year and try to get quite a bit of variety within those three major productions. We do a fall show, which is usually a modern play, frequently a comedy. Uh, it's very accessible to an audience. And then we do a big musical in, in the winter usually in February or March. And then in the spring, we do what is called our Advanced Drama Project, and this is a class project. And what it consists of is doing a major work by a major playwright. And this year, what we decided to do was Camino Real by Tennessee Williams. So you'll see a scene from that with Jacques Casanova and Marguerite Gauthier, or Camille, from the, the novel Camille. Uh, with Christian Faulkner and Donna Miller doing a very nice job with that. Something is something delicate, unreal, bloodless, sort of violets that could grow in the moon, in the crevices of faraway mountains fertilized by the droppings of carrion birds. Those birds are familiar to us. I heard them flapping their wings like old charwomen beating worn out carpets with gray brooms. Although we focused on the unique at Falls Church High School, our profile wouldn't be complete if we failed to give credit to the staff and teachers who are the cornerstones of every student's education. English teacher Halla Miser is just one example. Falls Church High School is a school rich in history. An $11 million renovation over the next two years will ensure a bright future. Principal Bart Kramer explains. I have a big vision for the future. I call Fair, uh, Falls Church High School the best kept secret in Fairfax County. I want to make sure that Falls Church is no longer the best kept secret in Fairfax County. I want to make sure that we get recognized nationally through academic excellence, athletic excellence, any way we can do that. <laughs> <laughs>